What's going on y'all? Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. I am Imani Murray and this is my YouTube channel and today we're going to be discussing how you can create a strong Instagram profile, a strong Instagram presence for your brand and business. All right, so let's get right into it. So creating a strong Instagram presence is extremely important and will help articulate your brand's voice to your audience, your online audience. Whether you're an influencer, you're a content creator, a clothing brand, a nonprofit organization, whomever. Your social media, especially your Instagram, is what I like to call a modern day business card. A lot of people don't use business cards anymore. They just rather tell you, oh, go follow me or go check me out at such and such. So having your Instagram well branded, well put together can result in more follows, more sales, potential clients and, con and customers, possible brand deals, partnerships, and so on and so forth. People should be able to look at your, your profile picture, your bio, this, the first six to nine grids on your profile, your six, the first six to nine pieces of content on your profile and know who you are or kind of get a feel for your vibe. They should be able to be like, okay, she's such and such, he is such and such, they do such and such here. They shouldn't have to go all the way down to, to the last, to the first picture as you've ever posted and understand what your brand is. Personal brand or a company, a huge company, a corporation. They should be able to get that vibe from the from your profile, I lied, from your profile picture, from your bio, and from the, the first six to nine piece of content. So the first step in creating a strong Instagram profile is starting with your handle, your Instagram handle. Your handle is your at name. So mine is very simple and straight to the point, at it's Imani Murray. So you know my full name at this point. Some brands, some um, brands that you can shop like to make theirs shop such and such. Or if you're a beauty brand, such and such beauty. You don't want something super long. Instagram already gives you a uh, a limit on how many characters you should use but you don't you don't want to like go overboard with it they should be able to understand at least some part of you through your ad name make it easy for people the next point is having a strong bio this is like super important so there's different components of your Instagram bio your Instagram's profile bio so starting out at the top is the name. So before Instagram recently updated, I would use that line to put what I did. I, my name on Instagram would be publicist and event producer because you already got my name and my handle. So I didn't need to repeat it again, right? Unfortunately, Instagram just updated and now when you DM people, instead of showing your at name, they show the name field. So instead of at it's Imani messaging you, it would be publicist and event producer messaging you, which is, I think is absolutely annoying. <laughs> um, so what I did to kind of adjust with that, I went and updated my name to, it says Imani slash brand strategist. Cause I kind of did a rebranding on my Instagram, but that's another conversation. <laughs> um, so instead of doing publicist and event producer, I now have Imani slash brand strategist. So people know, oh, it's Imani messaging me, but they also know, okay, this is what she does. Now, another another key reason why you need to take advantage of this name field, this name line, is because it's searchable. So if somebody's looking for a business coach and you put in your name, Denise slash business coach, when you search business coach, you're gonna pop up. Just as if you search brand strategist, I'm gonna pop up. Just as if you search if say you do lashes or yeah say you do lashes if you do lashes by jasmine you're gonna pop up um so do you get what i'm saying so it's making sure that you put your name but also put what you do so you're taking advantage of both but that's the first step of your bio the next step is that you have to understand is your bio is like your elevator pitch. Elevator pitch should be something very quick and simple that you can just roll off your tongue. Say you're in, in the elevator with Beyonce and this this is your time to shine, okay? This is your time to shine. You need to be able to sum up a few words and, and pitch yourself to her. Same thing with your Instagram bio. You should be able to put a few words together, a few keywords together and pitch yourself to potential clients, customers, followers, 
brands, businesses, so on and so forth. A few words that sums up who you are, what you do, what your company is, what your brand is, and make it catchy, make it cute. If you're a, a, a more on the serious side, make it make it who what your brand is. So this part of the bio is what I like to call the body of the bio. So it should include important keywords that really describe you. It should include who you are, what you do, if you offer a service, if you have a company or if you are the company, it should be mentioned in there. Um, some bloggers and influencers like to put where they're based so that brands know, okay, they're based out in Oklahoma. <laughs> I don't know why I just picked Oklahoma, but they're based out in Oklahoma. So if they want to invite you to an event and they're based out in Oklahoma, boom, they can invite you. Um, same difference if you're based in LA and they're having, a, having an event in LA, they know, okay, she's probably out here, let's invite her. Does that make sense? Not everybody needs to put where they're based, um, but I think it depends on what lane you're in and, and what your vibe is and who and what you do. Um, so that's the body of the bio. So we figured out the name and your title. We figured out the body of the bio. And now it's having a call to action. So in my bio, my, my body of the bio, it says growing my brand, hashtag Imani Murray, because you can use hashtags. Um, in your bio so growing my band creating travel and social media content for youtube and minding my while minding my business so if you look at my the body of my bio you know that i'm i have a brand i am a brand i create content for youtube i create travel and social media content and that i have a business so i linked my hashtag and i also connected i linked my businesses Instagram so all you have to do instead of searching through my profile you literally click instead of searching through all my pictures you literally click in my bio oh, okay this is her business oh, okay let me click the hashtag so I have what I do who I am my business and then I have a call to action it's very important that you include a call to action in your bio so under under the body of my bio, I have another line that says, watch me work. So that my call to action leads people to my website, okay? So name and title, body of the bio, call to action, and a website. You're linking them somewhere. Instead of using Linktree and TinyURL and all the other, I think there's Milkshake and all the other websites that you can use to, to have multiple links in one link, I created a landing page on my website so it brings the traffic back to my website so if you go to my profile you'll see it says www.imanimari.com backslash let's connect so you'll see links to my youtube you'll see links to my company's page you'll see um links to my reel to my into my hosting reel you'll see just a ton of different links on there so having the call to action and having a website for, so that they can see what you do. So if you're a, a company that sells something, make sure you you have your website there. Or if you are offering a service, whatever, however they can see what services you are offering, make sure it's in that link. Now we got the handle together, we got the bio together. It's now let's move on to your profile picture. It is so important to have a great, nice looking, clear profile picture. Whether it's your logo, whether it's a picture of you, make sure like people can actually, if it's a picture of you, make sure people can see you. If you're a company, make sure that, you know, it's your logo and it's a clear shot, it's a clear picture of your logo. You don't want something that's like super tiny or super blurry or pixelated or any of the above. Make sure that your profile looks nice. like. Make sure it's your best selfie, it's your, your head, it doesn't have to be your headshot, but something that's presentable. That makes somebody want to look to see, okay, what she got going on? What they got going on? Who is this person? You don't want something looking crazy. So next up is your Instagram content layout. Now, I know people used to be like so stuck on having like this cohesive theme aesthetic to their page. Um, and a lot of people have moved away from that, especially because Instagram took away the likes, like being able to see likes. So people are like, I don't care what I'm posting on my Instagram anymore. I'm just going to post. There's no like real theme. There's no real rhyme or reason to the, me posting or how I'm posting. 
which is cool and dandy but make sure that it still aligns with your brand like you don't have to make you don't have to be posting in some type of order or every three posts i have to post something in this color or such and such but make sure that it still looks presentable it still looks nice it still it still um conveys to potential clients customers whoever it still put it still conveys who you are and what you're doing and your vibe you don't want to be a fashion blogger that is just posting all these memes because it's like are you a meme page or are you a fashion blogger and whether you're posting to a certain aesthetic whether all your pictures are under one, have the same filter whatever just make sure it speaks to your brand and it has some type of flow it should flow be a cohesive flow that's the word it should flow <laughs> it shouldn't like just be all over the place and i'm not saying you have to post in a certain order but it also shouldn't be you know a mess and you know what a mess is so the next part is kind of optional you know some people are for it some people are not for it highlights highlights are permanent stories on your page and you'll see it it's the circles right under your bio some people are for it some people are against it um it's free there's no like it's nothing hurting you so why not utilize it you can use highlight covers to go along with your brand okay so say for instance my company's brand colors are mostly navy blue so our highlight covers are navy blue I think Meek Mill, his is um, his highlight cover spells out Meek, so it's M E E K. Each highlight gets a, a different letter. You can do it that way. You can do it. You don't have to have highlight coverage. You can just be showcasing off your products, your services, your trips, your fashion posts. Um, I see a lot of influencers these days are they have a highlight for their swipe ups or a highlight for their PO boxes. So if there's an item that you see that they, and they've provided the swipe up for it, the swipe up link for it, they'll put it in that highlight. Or if you sent them something to their PO box and they're opening items that they've gotten to, the, that they've received from their, at their PO box, they'll put all those items in there. And they'll also list their PO box address. If you are a company that is selling water, maybe you have a certain campaign going on, you can use a highlight for that. You won't look, you won't like be talked about or like look down upon if you do use highlights. Another key component in creating a strong Instagram profile for your bit for your brand for your business is your captions. Your captions adds to your brand voice. Just as I said before, your layout should speak to your brand. It should align with your brand. Your caption should align with your brand. You don't want to be a travel blogger that is just posting emojis as their captions. No, as a travel as a travel blogger, you wanna talk about your experiences and you wanna talk about where you went and what you do there and X, Y, and Z. You don't wanna to portray to people that you're a girl boss and then once again using emojis as your captions or just saying happy Tuesday as your captions. It should talk about what's going on in your girl boss life talk about if you're an entrepreneur talk about how your days are going what you're doing how you're adjusting during quarantine a simple caption like new week new opportunity to be great this is what i'm knocking off my list what are you guys knocking off your list oh, but you can also it doesn't always have to be so serious and and like i have to say certain things to make sure that my tone is no you can make it fun you can so Make sure your handle is on point. Make sure your bio is on point. Make sure your profile picture is your best picture ever. <laughs> make sure that's on point. You wanna make sure your the layout makes sense. You wanna make sure that your captions align with your brand. Your post, depending on who you are and what your vibe is, your post doesn't always have to be serious. It doesn't always have to be, you know, all about your business. You can make it fun. Just make sure that it aligns with your brand. Look at Wendy's. Wendy's is always tweeting something. Whoever whoever runs social media for, for Wendy's, for Fenty, their tone is very like fun and they're free. They can connect 
that's a that's why a lot of people love following these um their social media because they connect with their customers your customers are you have to know your audience honestly that's another huge part you have to know your audience if you're attracting someone that if your target audience is skateboarders you don't want to be talking about math related stuff in your bio in your captions you want to be able to speak the language speak to skateboarders whatever whoever you're attracting you should be able to translate that in your your profile in your brand voice in the tone of what you're posting and people should be able to understand that just by looking at your bio your handle your picture the first six nine six to nine God, not six nine the first six to nine posts on your grid on your page because like, like i said your instagram is the modern day business card and it's important to make sure these six points are taken care of and of course this is only for people that have public pages this is only for people that have business and creator accounts i'm not talking to people that have personal accounts you may have a public personal account but that's not who i'm speaking to and also it's very important to be consistent because that'll help grow your instagram that's a whole nother conversation so a lot of these points a lot of these these elements can be used across all your social media platforms. That goes for Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, what else? Snapchat. I don't know if people still use Snapchat anymore. Um, TikTok. And that's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure, as always, to follow me on all social media platforms. And, of course, like, comment, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to check out my video.